It just, it seemed like a natural fit that, you know, some of these rail cars suddenly decided that there was more to life than, you know, shipping plastic widgets and car parts, and maybe we, they jumped off. <laughs> jumped off. <laughs> yes. And yes, they just sprouted little feet and kind of hopped off. Welcome to TransLogic, I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. Every day, millions of shipping containers make their way across the ocean, but not all return. Some end up in junkyards or just scrap metal, but not if Collision Works has anything to say about it. Check that out. We're here with Shell, the founder of Collision Works. Shell, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Um, okay, so we are sitting in a shipping container. Tell me how we got here today. We're building a project a few blocks away from here that's a hotel and a community space, all out of repurposed shipping containers. We put this one here as a demonstration to show people what's possible. It's environmentally responsible. It's a durable material that we have in excess. I think another component is that Detroit still is the logistics capital of the world, right? There are more of those boxes coming in and out of Detroit than anywhere. And so though we're gonna use them in a new way, it's also something that um, resonates with the history. Uh, you have events here. You kind of surround yourself with this idea of storytelling. This space is really for the people of Detroit to connect with each other and kind of heal through storytelling, through their own personal stories, either told, performed, made into art, workshops, interactively presented on the walls. Mm -hmm. So it, it attracts a broad demographic. Because this project is so much about bringing different people together, it's called Collision Works, you know, the, nice. the collision. The collision, yeah. yes, okay. So we have all these boxes already. What can we do with them? And there's been a trend in the last five or six years of container arch architecture in the United States for living and working. But to date, there is not a hotel in the US. There's a lot of great design here. How did all that come about? I'm working with an architect in uh, New York called George Cooper. He has a firm called Coop uh, Architecture and Media. So you're an architect. You helped work on this project, right? Yeah, I'm an architect of uh, New York City. I met Shell about two years ago. Uh, we started the first container work about eight months ago. Uh, we always thought about doing something which is a preliminary test bed, try out all the projects, you know, all the sort of ideas first before we move to the larger project. Um, we had a great little opportunity to, to get it done beginning of summer in your standing, and right now we get so. Now, this isn't your first rodeo in the uh, shipping container world, right? Uh, so I had a great chance to work with Adam Kalkin for about five years in Quick Build, and I was running some of the larger scale projects over there. Uh, it should have left me to this idea about, uh, there's something about containers that's completely copy left. And then just everything about Detroit to me is just super awesome and amazing right now. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, that was the big seller. I mean, just to be in there, uh, the site that she has is amazing. Uh, you know, credit to Shell. She's been pushing this thing along for long. It's, it's really exciting on a lot of respects. You know, the container is just the smallest part of it. All right, so here we are on the site where the hotel is going to be. This is very exciting. The proposed hotel is going to cost around how much to have everything? The project total all in is $5 million. So right okay. now we're going through, we're trying to put together a layered financing package. It's very complex. I'm sure. We'll be using a bunch of different investment tools from city and state money to bank money, grants. Uh, community financing through direct public offerings. So yeah. There's a lot of pieces there that need to be sorted out. When we get through that, uh, it'll be about eight to 10 months of construction. Realistically, we're probably moving into spring of 2015. Yeah. And how many containers are you gonna use and how many people will that house? We're gonna have between 65 and 70 containers wow. for 45 rooms All and right. a lot of public event space. I mean, our primary target is, you know, classified as creative professionals, people that are curious about the city and, and are, are interested in exploring it in a more intimate way. How do you see this development and others like it as kind of helping rebolster Detroit? I think, first of all, just, just having a, a neutral space that people can freely hang out in um, is, is, is just positive. And then again, every situation has its problems, it has its advantages. And I think what's gonna wind up happening is Detroit's biggest problem, the fact that it's um, it's a little bit desperate, which to me is a fantastic thing because it, it, it's willing to be a little bit more creative. 
It's interesting that you would say Detroit is a city that's kind of gone through trauma and, and how helpful stories are to that healing process. What is your hope for this? What is your hope for Collision Works or what is your hope for the, these containers? To be honest, part of it's already happening. I mean, it, it, what's, what's amazing about this project is the types of interactions and conversations that have happened in this space have been, in some cases, truly, truly profound and transformative for the people that were experiencing them. And so we're already doing it, uh, and the, the idea is now to just grow it. It's not every day on TransLogic that we talk about boutique hotels and reviving communities, but it's the way that Collision Works is doing it that we like. Uh, the fact that containers that once rode the rails just a few yards from here might end up as a boutique hotel, that's pretty cool. All right, for TransLogic, I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.